at UFC 291, Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethje lock horns to decide who will be the baddest mother effa on the planet. The last time they fought in 2018, the diamond emerged victorious. But the highlight has improved leaps and bounds since then. So who will have the BMF belt strapped around their waist come fight night? Let's find out. Both Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethje have come a long way since they fought for the first time in 2018, where they exchanged blows like maniacs from start to finish. And what a barn buster it was, and the second one won't be any different, although the violence will be far more calculated in comparison this time around. Interestingly, both fighters have fought eight times since their first fight, winning six and losing twice against Habib Nurmagomedov and Charles Oliveira. Two goats of the lightweight division. In their most recent fights, Gaethje battered Rafael Fazib to secure a majority decision, while Poirier submitted Michael Chandler to bounce back into the win column after losing to Dubronx. Now, to be fair, there isn't a lot between the two fighters this time around. Poirier is still as deadly as he used to be five years ago, but Gaethje has come leaps and bounds since then, and the current version of the highlight is far scarier than the brawler he once used to be. So we are in for another Kraken fight. Both Poirier and Gaethje are exceptional strikers, but who is better? Who has the edge in striking? Dustin Poirier is arguably the best boxer in the UFC lightweight division, who has thunderous power in both hands and can throw bricks from southpaw and orthodox stances. He doesn't have a lot of holes in his stand-up game, and that's a worry for anyone who crosses paths with him, an exceptionally durable fighter with a gas tank that doesn't seem to ever run out. Poirier crushes his foes with relentless pressure and volume. The lefty mostly relies on shooting out sharp crosses from his predominant southpaw stance and keeps his distance while doing so, but that doesn't mean that he minds stepping deeper into the pocket and landing four or five punch combinations if he has to, especially if his opponents go into block mode. Gaethje did that in their first fight and landed a shot or two to receive four or five in return. Poirier's movement and awareness are top notch which help him stay one step ahead of his opponents. He is a fantastic kicker with some really nasty calf kicks, which he put on display against Conor McGregor and their twin bouts in 2021. On top of all of that, he has cardio for days and a chin that can take shots. The diamond has cardio for days and a chin that's been tried and tested. So all in all, he is not someone you would want to stand and trade with, unless of course you are Justin Gaethje. Back when the two fought for the first time in 2018, Gaethje was way more reckless than he is these days. Right from the start, he put pressure on Poirier and swung for the fences with little regard for defense and movement. And he ultimately paid the price for fighting fire with fire with a man who never runs out of hot sauce. Gaethje 2.0? is spicier, however. The major difference in the new and improved version of Gaethje compared to his brawler version is his improved ability to pick his shots without overextending. Instead of walking into shots like a zombie, he now lets his opponent walk into his thunderous fists. While Gaethje's punches are hard enough to crack sturdy chins, he relies heavily on leg kicks to do most of the damage for him. And by damage, we mean making his opponent crippled by the end of the fight. Less movement, more action. In their first fight, Gaethje brutalized Poirier, lead leg with calf kicks, and the Diamond even admitted later that he hadn't been kicked so hard in his life. Who's the best guy you fought that, that had kicks like that that said, oh man, this is a Gaethje probably. He tore, partially tore my quad. Oh, um, Gaethje. Wow. He yeah. throws him hard. Yeah. yeah. What, what he throws everything hard. for his body. Like he'll put him like, so what, into like, the fight, him not caring about position and throwing kicks as hard as he can just to land him, not worry about like a repercussion. Being a southpaw fighting an orthodox Gaethje, Poirier will always be vulnerable to leg kicks, especially inside kicks to his lead leg. But even if he switches to an orthodox stance, Gaethje has the ability to crush him with outside leg kicks. So that is pretty much bound to happen on fight night, unless Poirier has improved his checking game. But the question is, can Gaethje win an all-out boxing match with Poirier, especially when the Louisiana native lands nearly half a dozen strikes in one go when he's on song? Well, he may not have as many combinations as Poirier as Gaethje's calculated one-twos, 
are going to give Poirier a lot of problems. Unlike their first fight, Gaethje won't be walking into his foe's counter shots, and Poirier will have to force the action since his legs will probably be getting chopped down. Gaethje has manipulated distance really well in his past few fights, firing off big shots from his back foot and still managing to shift his weight into each punch. His setups are very educated as well, as he targets the body first before swinging upwards in the hope of connecting with his opponent's chin. He often fires a right hand, dodging the counter, and then responds with a quick left hook. Statistically, Gaethje has better offense, as he lands nearly eight significant strikes per minute on average, which is quite frankly outrageous. Defensively, Poirier is a lot better, as he absorbs a little over four significant strikes per minute on average, whereas Gaethje absorbs close to eight, which is again, outrageous. But that's the kind of fighter that the Arizona native is. So who has the edge in striking? Well, honestly, it's a tougher question than mom or dad, but we'd still give Poirier a very, very minute edge because of his combinations that may put Gaethje on the back foot and impress the judges as headshots are valued more than leg kicks. Now, the fight will likely be an all-out striking battle, but what if it somehow hits the mat? Who has the edge then? Who has the edge in grappling? Well, BMFs, they don't shoot for takedowns, do they? Unless it produces vicious ground and pound for jaw-dropping submissions, grappling isn't everyone's cup of tea. And MMA fans in general prefer a striking contest, especially when Dustin Poirier is on one side and Justin Gaethje is on the other. Now, we don't want to see these two rolling around on the canvas, of course, but in a high-level fight, anything can happen. Maybe one of the two gets clipped and has to panic wrestle. We never know. So it is important to find out who will have more success in the grappling department if the MMA gods forbid the fight hits the mat. Now Poirier has historically been a very solid wrestler who does much of his best wrestling in the clinch since he relies more on strength than speed and technique. Once he commits to taking the fight to the mat, he does a great job with trips and foot sweeps, but he is also excellent at quick level changes and double leg takedowns. Defensively, Poirier is exceptional again. For a start, he is a hard man to take down and even harder to control on the mat. He has a strong sprawl in the open and underhooks and collar ties against the cage which help him fend off takedown attempts. But as far as BJJ is concerned, Poirier is one of the best in the division with eight finishes by submission. Gaethje, on the other hand, is an NCAA Division I wrestler who doesn't like wrestling at all. Only recently he has been working on it, and he most recently secured a rare takedown against Fazeev. Now that's understandable because the lightweight division's champ is a multiple-time combat sambo world champion, while the number one contender has the most submissions in UFC history. So unless the rest of the guys work on their grappling and implement it in MMA, they're always going to have to fight for third place. Now that being said, Gaethje doesn't like offensive wrestling for some reason, despite being pretty darn good at it. Gaethje mostly relies on his Division I wrestling to fend off takedown attempts and keep his opponents away from him. He has a very solid sprawl, so he isn't an easy person to take down in the open. In the clinch, he is again very good with implementing underhooks to fend off takedown attempts. If anything, Gaethje only uses level change feints to create an opening for an uppercut or a knockout punch. As long as Gaethje can fend off Poirier's takedown attempts, if there are any, we would consider him successful in wrestling. But as far as submission grappling is concerned, Gaethje isn't a fan of it. He only has one career win by submission. So should the fight hit the mat, it will be super close, but we definitely give Poirier the edge here as well. The X Factors. Well, the X Factor for Poirier will be volume and aggression. Since Gaethje likes to stay on the back foot these days, Poirier will have to take the initiative and let his combinations flow. The only danger is Gaethje's counters. If Poirier can avoid most, if not all, and attack him in the pocket before moving out quickly, he'll secure either a late stoppage or a close decision. For Gaethje, it's all about being patient and forcing Poirier into overextending so he could land his huge counters. But leg kicks are going to be his biggest weapon come fight night. Poirier is tough, but Gaethje is a violent man, and it will all come down to who executes the game plan better. We're expecting an exceptionally close fight, maybe too close to call at this point, but we are favoring Poirier to use his output and cardio to secure a hard-fought victory in a potential fight of the year contender. Rest assured, UFC 291 is going to be bananas, but who do you think will win? 
We'd love to hear your predictions in the comments section below. And to watch more fight breakdowns, please smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.